Today's lesson is self-portrait drawing. A self-portrait is a picture of yourself. The artist is the subject. We are going to be drawing a picture of you and your pose is going to be very similar to the Mona Lisa. I can get ideas for my art from different sources. So the Mona Lisa is one of the most famous paintings in the world, painted by Leonardo da Vinci. These students painted themselves in the same pose as the Mona Lisa with an interesting background. I can use creativity to solve artistic problems and communicate ideas. Think about how you might position your body to look like the Mona Lisa and what background you would want to be behind you to show more about your personality. Your assignment is to do a self-portrait of yourself in the position of the Mona Lisa. So you're only going to need to draw the top half of your body, but you do need to have your hands crossed one on top of the other, just like hers, sitting at a slightly turned angle. And the background behind you can be anything that you like, maybe something that tells about your likes or your interests. Okay, it's time for my demonstration. I'm going to start by turning my paper the tall way and start with my head. And it's going to be rather large because I'm only doing the top half of my body. I like to draw like an egg shape over and over and over and then finally darken in the lines that I like the best and erase the lines I do not like. Now I'm going to add a neck below my egg shaped head and very lightly sketch in some of the body parts, like the shoulders, how wide I want them to be, what angle I want them to be at. Then the two arms are hanging down by my side. So I'm gonna start by drawing those lines. And I just keep retouching. As I don't like something, I'll just go back over it darker and try to create a line I like better. I'm trying to figure out what angle I want my arms to be at. And I will tell you that I do go back later and fix this up because I'm not quite happy with how they're turning out. But I'm trying to put one arm down first and the second hand on top of the first arm that I drew. Four fingers and a thumb. And then I'll draw in or darken in the first hand that I drew lightly. Now, getting these two arms to match seems to be quite a challenge for me here. So I might have to erase and go back again and erase and go back again. So the moral of the story is draw lightly when you're sketching because you probably will want to erase several times. And it's very hard to erase the pencil if you're pressing too hard. Now, think about what you want to be wearing in this picture. It doesn't have to be what you have on today and try to draw in the clothing. I'm gonna make a little collared shirt and a shirt underneath. Let's work on the face now. To make this egg shape look 3D, I'm gonna put two curved lines in my face to make it look more like the egg. And that line that goes down the middle is going to be where my nose and my mouth are. And the line that goes across the face is going to be just above my eyes. So I can place in a curved line to represent the top of each eye and a curved line for the bottom of each eye. And then the part that's colored in the middle of your eye is called the iris. It's either brown or green or blue or hazel. Draw that in and a pupil inside of that. And then I like to shade mine in with pencil, but leaving little bits of white spaces for the highlights. These are my eyebrows. And I'm gonna to try to put a nose right on that line. I'll go back later and erase those guidelines, but it's very helpful to start with them so that everything gets lined up correctly on the face. Now the hairline, I'm gonna to try to start this as a boy with short hair might do his, so it can be helpful to you. It covers some of the scalp. And maybe if you have a little bit longer hair, you might do this. And if your hair is even longer than that, I'm adding on more and more hair each time, so it might help some of you who have a different length hairstyle. 
Is that anybody you know right there? Now I'm going to get longer hair, actually more like mine that goes behind my shoulders. Or you could have some of it in front of your shoulders too. And just keep building up the hair a little bit higher, a little bit fluffier, a little bit thicker, all depending on how you look. You might want to take a break here and go check in a mirror and see what your hairstyle is looking like these days. And now's a good time to erase the guidelines that were in the face. I don't need them any longer, so I've got carefully got to erase them without totally erasing the nose and the mouth and the eyes. But I can always touch that part back up. This next shading part is something you might want to do if you plan on leaving this a pencil drawing. I'm adding shadow to the sides of the face by scribbling lightly a little bit of lead from my pencil and then taking a finger and rubbing it in and it blends that lead into a soft gray to give it some shadows. I'm trying out around the edges of the nose and under the chin and on the neck. I just realized if I'm going to put the shadow on the left side of the neck, I probably shouldn't have it on the right side of the nose. So I'm going to erase that shadow and put it on the other side. That way it looks like my light source is coming from the same side everywhere. That makes more sense. I think this arm here on, on the left side of my paper seems too wide compared to the other one. So let's try to fix that up a little bit. You're going to want to go back and keep checking things like that and make sure that they look the same. I think I'll add a chair now to have it make more sense as to why I'm sitting like that. So I'm putting a chair behind me. You might want to make up what kind of chair you would like to have. It only shows a little bit because I'm sitting on it. I'll shade the chair in so it doesn't look like part of my clothing. Okay, now I'm using this pencil as a guide to help me compare the lengths of both arms, and I knew I was troubled by that arm. One of my arms looks way too short compared to the other, so I'm going to have to go back and redo that part again, which is one of the great reasons we don't draw with marker to start with. Draw with pencil, there's a lot of erasing that needs to be done. So I tried to lengthen that arm, bring the elbow down a little bit lower to see if it can look more like the other side, which looks correct or natural. I'm erasing some of my old lines. Now it looks a little thin. Make that even lower. And then I'm going to compare it with my pencil and see if now they look more like the same length. I still think this one over here looks too wide, so I'm going to trim off some of that arm and make it look a little thinner, erase my old lines, and now see if they both look like they belong to the same person. Same length, same thickness. Hey, I gave myself a thumbs up there. <laughs> Check yours out. Remember, you can stop this video as many times as you need to and catch up on all the body parts and all the shading and even the background. However, yours does not need to be exactly like mine. I'm now shading the hands in a little bit because it looks funny to have the face shaded in, but not the hands. They're all skin, so I might as well do them the same. Well, you have made it to the end of part one, the drawing of your self-portrait. And next week, we'll come back and add some details to the clothing and a background and some color, possibly, if you'd like to. Welcome back to part two, where you will be creating a background 
and adding some decorative items to your clothing. If you can think of anything you'd like to put on your clothing that shows a little about your personality, your favorite colors, your favorite sports, now is a good time to add those details. Maybe even a hat. At this point, I want to shade the hair in with pencil. So I'm putting a darker shadow beside my neck and face. That'll help make my face sort of pop out and put the hair towards the back. Gives it a more realistic shaded look. You can also go back with color and do this entire thing with crayon or colored pencil or markers. But if you would like to leave it as a pencil drawing, that's fine with me, as long as you've done some shading and you have darker and lighter areas. Right now I'm thinking of a background and I kind of like the background of the Mona Lisa picture with the mountains in the background. So I'm just filling in with some rivers and some mountains and an interesting outdoor scene. And I'll put some trees in the background too, some evergreen trees. Here's how I do mine. After a few more trees, I think mine is complete. I have my self-portrait and my background, and the shading was done with pencil for the skin. If you have any colors at home and you'd like to paint it or use markers or crayons or colored pencils, you can do that now, and I think I'll try to color some of mine in with some watercolor paints. Here I am just getting started. I put a piece of white paper underneath my work area so I don't mark on the table. Notice when I'm outlining the hair, I'm not going to outline every single pencil line I put in that hair or it's going to turn it black like my marker. So I'm just outlining the shape of the hair and the shape of the face. Now I'll go a little bit faster and I'll outline everything that is already done in pencil. Go a little slower than this so you stay on the lines. And you can always use an eraser and erase any marks that are still showing in pencil when you're done. Now it's time to really be careful on the face because once you make a mistake with that black marker, you really can't fix it very easily in the face. So I'm outlining the eyes, nose, and mouth slowly and carefully with the thinnest black marker that I have. You can always outline it in a black colored pencil if you happen to have that at home too. All right, next, we're ready to start coloring. I'm gonna use watercolor paints, but you can use markers, crayons, chalk, colored pencils, whatever you happen to have at home. What I do here with the watercolor paints is I wet every single one first because they dry up nice and hard and you've got to re-wet them each time that you use them. They're called watercolor because you're going to paint with the colored water. So I'm not really stirring up the paint. I'm just making the water turn purple and then I'm spreading that purple water around. I'll make the skirt part blue since blue and purple are my favorite colors. And now in the sleeves, I'm going to actually mix some blues and purples together to make different kind of indigo colors. Green is also a cool color, so I think that would match very nicely. Blue, green, and purple always go well together. I'm mixing brown and yellow together for my hair. My watercolor paint set doesn't actually come with a skin color, so I've got to find ways of mixing orange and brown and lots of water to dilute that into a very light peach color. Don't forget to color your neck and your hands all in that same skin color. You can see what I did with the brown. I made it a lighter value, a darker value, and now I'm mixing brown with purple to change the look of the brown for the mountains. If you don't have paint, you can do this in marker or crayon or colored pencil. I'm going to actually use some markers now 
and go back and do some of the smaller areas because I'm afraid I might ruin it with the paintbrush. So I'm going to fill in some yellow and some pink inside this clothing area. Very carefully, I'm putting some blue inside the eyes, but I like to leave a little white highlight so I don't fill the entire thing in with blue. Makes it look like it has a shine to it. And I'll use some green marker for the trees in the background so they don't leak into the surrounding grass area. All right, I'm done with mine. Here it is without the white paper behind it. And I'm very happy with my Mona Lisa self-portrait. It's time to take a picture of yours and upload it to our team.